Hello and welcome to today's Just Chops in Podcast with David and myself. We have the lovely Emma Scott Miles. Do you want to put the miles on the end? Oh, don't put the miles on the end. No one knows Emma Miles. Okay, Emma Scott. Mm, <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Just Emma Scott. <laughs> oh shit, I got my book on the wrong page now. Should I oh, change my see, name so on the screen? How do I change my name on the screen? Uh, I think it's when you were originally log in, I think. Yeah. Oh, piss. Mm-hmm. So you'll have to change it next time you go in. Hold on, change. Uh... So, Emma All right. Scott. <laughs> what, hold on, I was trying to do my you thing. We start... name. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to change my name, Emma Scott, even though Emma Miles, like, that's my Facebook name. Are we starting again? What no, are we doing? We started. <laughs> <laughs> you absolute ass. <laughs> <We're laughs> I'm, trying... I'm trying to look at I'm trying to change my name. The shop. It's uh, all going wrong, isn't it? What are you doing? Well, I'm trying to change my name. I don't want to be name it, known as that. That's my Facebook profile name. That's because it's I've got two names, Emma Scott and Emma Miles. So I just combine the two. But and Emma Scott Miles, so that's three names. Emma Scott Miles isn't actually a person. Okay. It's just a Facebook uh, profile. All right. Anyway, radio DJ Emma Scott. Yeah, whatever. What, what about it? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm being hyper. <laughs> I see you work oh, shut as up. DJ. On I'd, Kerrang, yeah. Heart FM, Power FM, and more. Done a few. Mm. And you're currently on Primordial Radio? Well, I'll do a bit of Primordial, yes, Saturdays. What does Primordial Radio play? They do rock and metal. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's a subscription radio station. I think it's uh, one of the only ones in the country. So, yeah, we've got, a, we've got a bunch of members, and they pay us to play music. Um, there's no adverts. It's, uh, it's rock, metal, and it's community. So, um, oh. yeah, it's very good, it's like a big family. And that's why I decided to come out of radio retirement because okay. I had no intention of being back on the radio when I left in 2013. And then the boss, Moose, came, kept asking me and kept asking me and he kept asking me. And I was like, oh, you finally worn me down, man. And, and I only decided to do it because, you know, the primordial radio family are like a family and, uh, you know, we all look after each other. And I thought, oh, all right, I might as well. And they probably pay you a fortune. You, uh, there's no money that changes hand. There's no money that changes hands at all. So uh, yeah, we're, Although we're they don't um, have money nowadays. All we're funded. Bank account. We're funded by the people that pay, and most people are on a free a free trial. I'm like, just come off the free trial and pay it. God damn it! But anyway, um, yes, I'm on primordial at the minute, but we are tweaking. We're tweaking things at the moment, and I might be coming off the show to do band interviews and things like that. And oh, music no industry way. tips, things like that. You're going oh, to be nicking out a spot. No, well, we just signed no. up to the radio, actually. Tell me more. We are going on to what's it called, Dave? Radio Scotland Sports. Radio Rocks. Scotland Rocks Radio. Sorry. Scotland Rocks Radio. Very good. I, they, I, I plug to them. I plug to them. Uh, John does a show there, does a rock show there. John and uh, from... John Craig, yeah, from, yeah, from uh, the Forge. The Forge. Yeah. 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 So lovely John, he plays some of my bands, which is yeah. good. And um yeah, they're um they're a good little radio station up there. So nice. You want to yeah. spread yourself out a bit more. Well, that's what we're trying to do. Right. Take over the world. Yeah, slowly. <laughs> inch by inch. Yes. So but we'll be you playing did. some of your bands as well. Yeah. Thank you. Because You're the format of our show will be what we're gonna do is we're gonna get guests onto the podcast. And then we're going to give them a 10-minute spot on the radio to tell us about their new song. Nice. Don't give them 10 minutes. That's far too much for a band. Oh, God, can you imagine the drivel no. that's going to come out of their mouths? Well, it's not really 10 minutes. It's not 10 <laughs> minutes all at once. It's cut up into little... Oh, that's all right then. Yeah, that's, you know, that's forever in radio terms. When I was on Kerrang, we could only... You know, we got the biggest bands in the world coming in and they're like, two minutes max with Dave Grohl, two minutes max with Corey Taylor. I'm like... Two minutes. They're like, yeah, people get bored. Listeners don't want to listen to them for more than two minutes. And I was like, I stretched it out to five minutes, I'll be honest. Um, but, yeah, that was the guideline, two two minutes yeah, and yeah. Uh, get out kind of thing. Yeah, but that's probably a two-minute chat. And then – but what we're going to do is like – Then we a, play a song. We're going to do like a one-and-a-half-minute chat, then a song, then a new song. Oh, probably. that's professional, that is. You know what you're doing, you guys. Well, we're trying. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got a fucking clue, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I, I just you know two minutes song, two minutes song, two minutes yeah, song. That's it. That sounds good. You you've got a good thing going on there. I don't know. I think we're, I was just going to do a ten minute slot. I don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't planned it. it. Well, you're not allowed now. There's I a bit of wing. Not allowed. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Unless you want to th- throw a few artists their way, and I'll be fine, am I? You can have who I have if you want. Sloppy yeah. seconds. I'm, I'm I'll, sloppy seconds. I'll warm them up. I'll warm them up for you. And we'll finish and then I'll, up. I'll, <laughs> exactly. They'll be exhausted by the end. Or we'll play with me, and then you get the full session but after. They will have to come on the podcast for 45 minutes. Oh. Well, you know what? That's a good thing. A lot of, you know, the, a lot of the bands I work with are absolutely chomping at the bit to come on, aren't they? We've got a few lined up. So um, yeah, yeah. they love it. It's good. It's really good. Uh, it's really good PR. It is. Mm. Talk about PR. Yeah, well, what about it? <laughs> a radio plugger. <laughs> yeah, a radio plugger. I've been doing radio plugging since 2013. When I left full-time radio, I'd done 25 years of radio presenting. Yeah. And then I had a bit of a crossroads sort of session after 25 years. I was like, I'm going to come off the radio now. I'm just going to get bands played on the radio. And uh, uh, I, that's when I started Plugging Baby, the radio plugging company. Mm. And uh, I was just supposed to be a couple of weeks I was going to do that until I decided what to do properly, and I haven't really got out of it. But, yeah, it's all right. It's good. I like working with bands uh, okay. generally. That Some of them are a pain in the arse, but they soon get told. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of our listeners probably won't know what a radio plugger is, and they won't even, no. know, wouldn't even know how to get a band on the, uh, on the radio. So how would you go about getting a band on the radio? Yeah, well, a radio plugger is basically the middleman in between the uh, radio station or the DJ um, and the actual client, which is the musician or the band. So, uh, and the plugging uh, radio plugger is uh, then provided with all of the press assets. <laughs> My headphones are falling off. Oh, God. Yeah, so the, then the plugger, so like I'm working for the musician. And I get all of the press assets, as they're called, you know, the, the WAV file, the MP3, the artwork, the bio, all the social media links. Um, so I compile, like, you know, this top email um, or press pack. And then I send it to all of my uh, radio contacts that I've been building up over the past, you know, eight plus years. Because some people I plug to, I've known for 20, 25 years. Certainly the bands, um, the DJs that I plugged to at Kerrang, you know, I've known them f- since 2004. So, you know, we've um, been mates for a long time. So uh, usually my clients come to me and they're like, send it to your mate Johnny at Kerrang. And I'm like, of course I will. Uh, and yeah. uh, obviously Johnny pays a lot of attention when I send him emails because we're mates. Um, so that's very good. So, yeah, I basically compile that email, get all the files ready and everything's uh, labeled up and, you know, the metadata's in and all of the tagging and all that shiz. And then um, send it out to radio. And then I just sit there and wait for the emails to flood in saying, and I love that band you just sent me. Um, I'm going to play it on my show. And then I relay that information to the client, to the musician. Then they can advertise it on their socials. They can tune in if they want. They can get little press quotes if they want. Uh, They can uh, just whack it on socials. Did I say that twice? I am menopausal, so I do forget what I'm talking about. Um, I say things maybe three times without even knowing, but I think I just said the same thing twice. Um, And I will talk about it on my socials. Um, So, yeah, it's Radio Airplay and it's added online PR as well. And um, I also try and get my band sessions and interviews on shows like yours and uh, generally just look for opportunities for them and kind of like I'm, I'm like the mother hen. The mother They're my hen. little babies, my plug-in babies. Well, how, so, yeah, the, that's the, the job question. of a plugger. Well, how much does a plugger cost? Well, it can be – if if it's a newer company, I'd say you could probably get a plugger for 300 quid for a single. Uh, they do go up to probably three grand. I know – I definitely know that there are pluggers that charge three, maybe three and a half grand for a single. And um, I always say when I talk about plugging, I always say to bands, plugging is not always the answer. You can do a lot of it yourself. You can save a lot of money. I actually train people how to do it themselves as well. Um, So I've just started doing that. I started doing that as part of my um, master's degree that I just did. Um, And I loved it so much that I want to actually do it as part of my business. I'd rather actually teach bands how to do it themselves than actually do the plugging because it's more fun talking to musicians, isn't it? And saying, hey, this is what you have to do. And it will save them thousands of pounds in the long run because they won't need to hire a plugger. I was going to say then, in the long run. In the long run, they're going to absolutely Because they're going to have to pay in. you for the teaching or not. They can pay me for that, but that's just, you know, con- normal consultants cost, you know, probably a couple of hundred pound an hour, don't they? I've just paid a consultancy fee for someone. 
and that was two 250 for an hour i don't charge that i charge i i reckon it's it's under 100 pounds an hour the training i think takes about four hours okay. um so after that four hours you're pretty much your own radio plugger you don't need to hire anyone else so i think that's the way forward really i don't think anyone else is doing it either and especially no one's doing it that actually understands radio from this side of the mic um you know because i've done it i know exactly yeah. what what radio needs i'm not just radio plugger and that's not my i mean it's my job but i've and i've taught myself how to do it but that isn't really my expertise my expertise is just radio and radio industry um knowledge so yeah I've, teaching yeah i'd love to teach um, musicians how to do that i haven't really launched that part of my business but that is what i want to do uh, running alongside plugging baby next year and then hopefully i'll be able to stop doing the plugging and just do the teaching because that's that's where it's at so um yeah plugging um i always say if you if you come across a plugger that says um uh hand me over three thousand pounds i'll get you on the planet rock a list or i'll get you on radio one or i'll get you on radio two I'd say run very fast because nobody can guarantee that sort of airplay. Yeah. Um, if you're uh, if you're dealing with an independent artist, you know, if you're dealing with, um, you know, oh God, let's think of a big pop star, Adele. If it was Adele and you were charging Adele three grand, yes, of course, you would get her on Radio 1 or Radio 2. You probably wouldn't get her on 6 Music, um, but uh, some pluggers might claim that they can um so yeah you if you're working with a known artist yes it is easy to say all right i'm sure i can get steve lamack to play you or i'm sure i can get joe wiley to play you or bob harris or you know johnny walker or any of those acts but when you're dealing with independent artists like we deal with um the chances are very slim on those big stations so just because you're handing over the money it don't mean you're going to get the airplay it just means you might be in with a chance um, so just I've heard of stories of these uh, slithery pluggers out there. And there's a few out there that will say, you've been played on the new rock show on Planet Rock. Well, you haven't been A-listed. I can get you A-listed. And I'm like, whatever, mate. <laughs> so just be careful when people when people claim to, you know, guarantee that you're going to get on these stations. Um, I'd, I, yeah, I'd seriously think about handing over that money. You yeah. can guarantee they can guarantee they're going to send you to those radio stations, but you can't guarantee that that you're going to yeah, get anybody on at this level and going up to that level. You know, you've got to put the foundations in as an independent artist. You've got to start with the smaller stations and then and start building up. You know, it's hard to get on Kerrang Radio, and I used to work there, so I've got a really good relationship. And pretty much most uh, most of the bands I deal with end up being played on on Kerrang, but it will just be spot plays. It's very hard to get bands playlisted on yeah. national brands like Kerrang and Planet Rock. So yeah, it is it's the spot plays that they should be aiming for, and and it's not just about the radio airplay. It's what you do with that radio airplay after. It's it's the talking about it on your socials and um, you know just being really excited about it generally and talking yeah. about it and getting the con you know getting the quote from the dj and like wyatt wendell said da, 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 or johnny doom at kerrang said blah, blah 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 and then just you know adding that to your press release or your bio or your epk or your website yeah so yeah it's not just about the radio play it's what you do with it yeah. so anyway that's because um, bugging. most radio djs they don't pick their own playlists correct yeah they don't but you you occasionally can get uh, a, a spot play like I think Johnny at Kerrang gets just a handful of spot plays every week. Um, Wyatt on the new rock show on Planet Rock, yeah, his show is about twelve songs, um, and and he selects all of those. It's it's just an hour show a week, and he does get about sixty, seventy, eighty, a hundred different um, submissions every week. I'd say he probably gets a little bit more than that as well some weeks, depending on mm. release. Like it's a busy time for releasing stuff in October and November. It's calmed down a little bit now because it's all about Christmas. Um, but yeah, I, I would suspect he's got at least a hundred to choose from and he'll add maybe five new songs every week. So are you going to be one of five? You've, you know, it's, it's not easy. Once he's chosen his five as well, he's not got any reason to go and listen to the other 95 in his inbox because he's got the five he wants. Yeah, so yeah. 95 see you later you know yeah. you'll get filed uh, aka thrown in the bin <laughs> so it's it's not about to, by the way it's not about whether you you're, you're crap or not like if you're in that 95 that you've just you know ended up in the bin it's not because you're crap um it's just because he's 
not got to you in time and he's chosen his five songs that he wants to play so yeah um, sending it again every week and just making sure that no you won't want to send it every week you'll you'll probably irritate the dj in question the best thing you can do is just just keep trying on each single release you know i i personally i send an email out and then if if i notice that um i haven't had any a, a play or a reply from you know kerrang or planet rock i will then send a little sort of reminder email just a polite sort of you know just wondering if you've had chance to listen to da 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 um but i, I wouldn't hassle um because that is a bit of a, a turn off really for djs and it, it might kind of annoy the dj so much that they I'm uh, just going to shove you in the bin before even listening to you. So usually I'd say, might send an email, and then maybe three weeks later, send a little polite reminder. Um, and if you still don't get anything, don't go again for a third time. Wait until your next release and try again. And then because you've been polite, and you know, using Planet Rock as, as an example again, if you've been polite to Planet Rock and you haven't got the ass and said, "Why I can't believe it, you've ignored me again." You know, if you haven't been an ass about it, why it won't be an ass back? And then he'll say, "Oh, I remember that band. Yeah, they sent me some stuff before. I couldn't play it before. Let me have a listen." And then you might be the one of the five that he does play. So yeah. it's it's timing and luck and being polite as well. You can't piss DJs off because they will remember. And um and you've got to give them what they want. You can't be sending things with uh, swear words in for example you know if you send anything with any explicit language in you you're likely to get banned from sending or just noted oh he sends f-bombs i'm not gonna risk it you know planet rock uh, are the biggest rock station in the country with over a million listeners a week they cannot risk getting a fine for dropping an f-bomb um and you will get fined they they're really tight on um language on Kerrang and Planet Rock and Kerrang you know a lot of people are like Kerrang you know it's rock it's all about fuck this fuck that it's it's so not it's they're 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 squeaky clean believe me if you get fined 10 grand that radio station is going to feel that yeah. and that is a lot of people's wages just gone down the drain there so um we used to get well we had got fined at, at Kerrang for um a DJ doing things it wasn't a, a band that had sworn but we uh, there were I think they were two big fines for a DJ, Tim Shaw, his name is. Um, and uh, yeah, big shout out to Tim. He's a friend of mine, loved him, but he was very risque and he would do things that would get him into trouble with Ofcom. And um, I'm sure, I'm sure, I don't know, hang on, he might, it might have been the previous radio station because Tim and I worked at, at Hallam FM in Sheffield together. Um, I think he got, a, I'm sure he got a 25 grand fine. And then I think he got a 10 grand fine and nearly crippled the radio station. And he left. Then he went to Kerrang. Whether he'd got a fine at Kerrang, I can't remember. But uh, it was always one of those things. It's like, what's he going to say this week that's going to get him in trouble? So, yeah, don't. if you are listening, if you're a, an independent musician trying to get radio airplay, no swears, please. Uh, I mean, on a station like Primordial, we don't mind at all. We, we prefer the full F-bombs. Um, but uh, Primordial is, you know, one of a handful of stations that will be fine with swearing. So don't risk it and definitely don't risk it with stations like Kerrang! and Planet Rock because, yeah. you know, you don't want to blow your, you know, imagine if you were one of five and then he looks at your lyrics and he's like, oh, it's just, they've just oh, said, fuck, yeah. I can't play them now. So then you're, you're tipped and then he might remember you as the band that swears. So just yeah, yeah. make it so easy for yourself. Um, and another tip for musicians sending off music to radio Um is send a WAV as well as an MP3 yeah. and um, send them to Dropbox or SoundCloud or a WeTransfer link that won't expire. Um, I always send out SoundCloud, Dropbox, MP3 attachments if the DJ likes that. Um, Horlicks, which is the way I send my um, emails out. Um, and I've started doing WeTransfer now. And um, yeah, I just basically send it in any way I can, WAV and MP3. 16-bit WAV, you don't need to do 24-bit, or bloody hell, that's massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, It's too much. But, you know, if you can't transfer, you, if, you, if you're not really up on all of the 16 bits and the 24 bits, don't worry too much. But, um, yeah, WAV and MP3 access, downloadable files. Don't send Spotify links and expect a DJ to be able to play from Spotify links. Obviously, they can't. They need to download it into their system and then upload it to the radio station system. 
you know, it's it's yeah, it's quite a you know, it's quite a process. You've got to be able to tick quite a lot of boxes when you're plugging um, yourself. But if you allow me to teach you, <laughs> you won't make any mistakes. <laughs> I know all the ins and outs, you know. So, yeah, well, the masters then we're at Water Bay College. Yeah, Water Bear in Brighton, and it was um, through Falmouth University. Um, uh, I was a bit bored at the time uh, of taking that on, <laughs> and I didn't know whether my – it was when – so it was it was 2020 and it was COVID, and we all started – as COVID progressed, I was fine for a while because I get booked up quite a lot of time in advance. So, you know, COVID hit March 2020. Um, I had work booked for the, like four months, and then as it got to the summer, I started looking at my diary thinking – Oh, you know what, Em? There's nothing in there. What what the hell's going on? And the reason being, the bands had been able to get in the studio and they had stuff recorded, mixed, mastered, and ready to go to radio. But as the lockdown continued, they couldn't get into studios. And so there was nothing that they could send to me to send to radio. And I was like, oh, shit, this is all going wrong. And I was, I was getting so poor that I had to apply for a universal credit. And then I was thinking, okay, uh, what am I going to do? And so I messaged Water Bear. And I already knew Bruce from uh, Water Bear, Bruce Dickinson, not not the one from Iron Maiden. Oh, I know Bruce Dickinson. Know He's lovely. Him. He's great. And, and I said, Bruce, I said, Bruce, I need to get some dollar in. I said, um, can I do some teaching or something at Water Bear? And he says, no, 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 I've got enough. I've got enough lecturers. I don't need you. I was like, oh, shit, what am I going to do? He said, do the masters, Emma, just do the masters. I was like, oh, right, I'll get another 10 grand in debt to do the masters. He said, yeah, but it'll change your life. And so I, I took a student loan. Things did start picking up because that, then as bands were allowed to get back in the studios, then they were giving me stuff. And I, we picked up by, by Christmas again. It was fine. I had to pay back the universal credit money that I got. God, bloody, that's great, isn't it? Give me £400. They took it back about two months later. I was like, all right, fair enough. I don't need it. Um, so it was, a, it was looking a bit dodgy. And then so I took the Masters and I started in September 2020 and finished in August 2021. And um, yeah, it was a funny old time. I had no idea what I was doing. I'm not an educated person. I left school at 16 with a couple of GCSEs, struggled with them because I was just properly interested in radio. I, I didn't want to have a normal job. I didn't need an education. I'd got my YTS training set up at my local radio station. I was like, just get the exams done. I need, I need to get out of this hell hole. I didn't like school. I was just, I, I preferred pottery and PE at school and I failed them as well. <laughs> How's that happen? <laughs> I was really good at PE. I got ill on my exam and I, I don't know why I didn't take part in the physical exam. Anyway, it was horrific. So I couldn't wait to get out of school. Um, so anyway, with my couple of GCSEs, I managed to get on, on uh, experiential learning and I, they allowed me to do the master's because I haven't got a bachelor's. I don't know. I don't even know the terms. I never went to school. So um, he's an intellectual. Yeah, you're you're more intellectual than me. I I never did a BA, but so I went straight for the MA, the Masters, and um, yeah, I got in on the experience because I've been doing the music industry for thirty odd years, and they kind of felt sorry for me for me, I think. But anyway, so yeah, I did that, and um, part of my uh, Masters was the whole teaching bands how to do their own radio airplay. Is is it possible to teach musicians how to do it themselves? And the answer was yes, it is. Um, and I loved all that. I loved doing the webinars because we had um, webinar sessions that we were doing. And then I was, you know, researching what they what they liked about it, what they didn't, what I could have improved on. So I got it down to a T. And then um, I loved the research. I interviewed um, a guy called James Kennedy. He's a musician. And uh, he, yeah, wrote, he wrote that, that brilliant band, My uh, Life as a Rock and Roll Underdog. Yeah. That I could, I covered that in my lit review um, immense. I just thought it was an amazing book. And then I did a podcast with James and that was part of my submission. And then I did three part, uh, three part podcast on Spotify for how to get radio airplay and also the YouTube videos. Um, and I think it was my practical stuff that, that got me the prize because, oh, okay. uh, but then apparently my writing was very good. So I'm not going to like slag myself off uh, because I've, got a distinction and i was yeah i did really well but okay. it's very surprising take it take it isn't i'm it? taking it Definitely. i'm taking it don't know where my certificate is it was somewhere oh you i need don't know to that. i need to get a frame yeah. i had all the notes from my teacher oh look here it is i've got it in front of me this submission has been a breath of fresh air and i feel you've done an outstanding job with the work you've undertaken here that's the top line i won't go on i don't need to go on but um yeah i was really 
I was really pleased with that, considering yeah. Yeah. considering I got three GCSEs and yeah. didn't even pass pottery. Yeah, you couldn't <laughs> even pass PE. I didn't know you could do... I was bloody good at PE as well. Yeah, because you you being the same age as me then, we were the first years of... GCSEs. We were. And that's why I think I did so badly, because we were the guinea pigs, weren't we? Yeah, I agree with you. I'm 1988 exactly, exactly GCSE. Yeah, mm. I was mm, yeah, well. yeah, we struggled with that because I think that didn't we have coursework and they, then they didn't. Oh, I don't know. I can't remember what happened, but yeah, it was all the bloody fast love. We yeah. were we was robbed. They made it up as they were going along. I think all the top guys got what they expected. Us middle guys didn't get what we wanted. And the guys that you expected to fail failed anyway. So, yeah, five E's. I got five E's, a D and three C's. Yeah. So uh, not great. I didn't get maths. And I've struggled no. with that since because uh, there's been other jobs I've wanted to go for, like at the local fire station, fire fire service. Um, and well, they, want they wanted the maths. No, I want to. <laughs> I wanted to be a firefighter. I tried to do that actually, but well, you, you have to pass. do a, you have to do a maths test. Oh, yeah. um, oh, I passed all. I passed. Well, you need all. to know how many rungs are on the ladder. Um, I think it you was about gauges. The angles of the um, fire hose yeah. and stuff, is it? Probably oh, the yeah. pressure, water pressure, the length of a hose. Um, God knows. Anyway, I passed the test there. And then um, then I got to the 10-week training and my menopause hit and I thought I was having a bloody breakdown. I was like, geez, oh, of course I was the oldest. I'm usually, when I first started in radio, it was hilarious. I was so young that the radio station bosses made me lie about my age and said, Emma, you're only 19. You, they won't take you seriously being so young so we had to lie and say i was 23 and now i'm i'm 49 and and i'm the oldest one and now i'm like i'd never pretend i'm younger ever um doesn't interest me lying at all but i really hated that when it, when i was young and they were like oh they won't take you seriously doing a drive time show on your own, a girl on your own well, you don't look a times. no oh it's a soft it's a soft, soft uh, focus isn't it Oh, is it? <laughs> well, yeah, I am actually here in the Northern Lights. It's That's very right. um, replenishing. Yeah, yeah. Mm, mm. yeah. I've got a bit of a hot flush going on. I do have a, I do get a bit of a hot flush every now and again. But um, okay. yeah, it's the hormones. I haven't, I haven't taken my HRT today. To be fair. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Could have done with that, eh? Hey? Uh, my wife's having hot flushes. At the Does moment. that make you go crazy, or? Your wife's having hot flush. Yeah, the the menopause is horrific. Well, the, the hot flushes is kind of like the 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 thing that you can see. It's the iceberg. You see you see the iceberg and you see the hot flushes underneath the surface. Jeez, everything's going wrong. Everything is going wrong. And it took me a long time just to to, to get on HRT. I tried to do it naturally as as naturally as I could, but uh, it just got me in the end. And I was like, no, nah, I'm going for the HRT. And because uh, it's like anxiety, you don't want to leave the house. It's just uh, it's just your mind plays tricks on you overwhelm you get overwhelmed and it's your it's your liver and your kidneys and your adrenal glands and it's really it's everything's hormones yeah. your whole world your whole body is you know your hormones and when you run out of estrogen and progesterone and um what's the boy one called testosterone yeah and we go and i didn't even know i had testosterone but yeah, yeah, yeah we've all got so. it yeah. um so yeah and it's you know your libido i mean don't get me started on that <laughs> So yeah, it all goes a bit. So yeah, feel sorry. Feel sorry for you, mate. Yeah, because I, I heard <laughs> a thing once about um, the women's menopause that if they were treated with testosterone replacement, because a lot of doctors treat it with estrogen replacement, mm. which if they t treated it with testosterone replacement instead, you would naturally incre it would naturally increase your own estrogen and progesterone. Well, would it? Uh, it's against yeah, the testosterone, yeah. is it? Yeah. Oh. It's, it's actually a testosterone deficiency rather than estrogen. Because once you test, it's the same in men. Once you're, for men, once your testosterone drops, your estrogen goes up. And that's why you see all these men with men boobs and stuff. Wow. Well, I mean, I know that boys get affected by it as well. Um, yeah. You know, and, and, and the middle age, cri midlife crisis, that's what they call it. Then, when yeah. men go out and buy these sports cars, yeah. I had a similar thing. <laughs> my midlife, yes, my midlife crisis, I bought a camper van. Um, so, you know, it was not, not a sports car, uh, or, and, and also hashtag midlife crisis. I went to learn how to scuba dive. It's kind of your body saying you better get out there and have some fun because you're going to be dried up and old very soon. So you've got to fight against mother nature. Um, well, you, you didn't like getting wet anyway. 
I, I liked getting wet. Oh. What do you mean I didn't like getting wet? <laughs> I was scuba diving. <laughs> I didn't David necessarily. Told you didn't like getting wet. You, you, told, you told um, Shane and Ronnie on those damn crows on their crow caps. You weren't fussed on getting wet. I you, didn't. You well, I did crack at it, though. Yeah, that was a joke. I was joking then. <laughs> I didn't like the whole ear thing and the snot thing. Yeah. I mean, that was vile. I, that, that's not something that I was prepared for. Mm. Even though the uh, diving instructor's wife, she came to the swim because we had to do the swimming pool session first, and she came to the swimming session. She was just helping us out, and she said, "Yeah, she said you're going to have to be careful of the snot. That you know, your mask is going to be full of snot by the time you get out." I was like, "Yeah, whatever, Nikki, whatever." She was right. Yeah, she right. was right. I should have paid attention um, because yeah, I, and I had a nosebleed as well because there's such pressure on your body and you you know your ears are taking it and you've got to blow your nose out all the time as you're going down and the pressure's you know. Um, so I had blood and snot in my mask. It's not attractive, but I'm going to be a bit more prepared for it this time. And We're I'm going going again. For. I'm going again. I'm already booked for Feb. See? Oh, okay. Where are you going? It's going to be colder. I'm going back to Egypt again. Same place as before. Nice. Sham. Um, with the same dive school before, uh, as before. Elite. Uh, hello to Alan. Have you got your license? Yes, I have. I'm, I'm, uh, I've got a paddy. Yeah. Paddy. I um, don't know what they call it. Certificate. That. Yes, uh, I've got that. <laughs> um, but I'm not advanced, so, but I don't want to be advanced yet. Oh, God, no. I can go down to 30 metres. I don't want to go any deeper. That's fucking deep enough, isn't it? I don't need any, you know, no one needs to go any deeper. So I would like to do shipwrecks, but there's a lot of shipwrecks that are not lower than 30 meters. So, um, you know, there are some that are lower and I'll do that when I'm more advanced and you have to take like a shipwreck course for that. Okay. You're not supposed to go in because you've got to be trained. Yeah. Am I just looking? I'm I'm quite happy looking at sharks. You know, they don't want to eat us humans. They're not interested. All the divers love us, love a shark. Um, yeah, we did, I didn't see any. I didn't see any sharks, but the, uh, the guys on the other boat were, um, were loving their sharks. Mm. And um, I like the the rays, the the, the yeah, blue yeah. ray and the eagle ray. They're nice. And the Nemo's. I like the puffer fish. Okay. Mm. I don't know why we're talking about this, but mi- no, yeah. not me. Uh, I, and all about your menopause. Like thanks for telling us about that. We've <laughs> talked about libido. We talked about HRT, testosterone. <laughs> not like getting wet. <laughs> uh, that was a joke. I just didn't like not being able to breathe underwater. I mean, what's all that about? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's unnatural. Snorkel and mask. No, you have a mask. Scuba I, I don't think I'd like that. See, I, I want you know, like when they stick a big helmet on him. Yeah, and that that's you, um. And you breathe. That's called motorbiking. No. Yeah, no, that is um snorkeling. That's like the new a new snorkeling thing. Yeah, you don't want to go under. Yeah, you just want to breathe through your little tube. No, but, no, yeah. no, no. When when you go under, you have like a full mask on. A diving bell. I don't bell. know anything about yeah, that. Not a diving uh, bell. Like a bell mask or something. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you breathe and everything in it. So you don't. It sounds a... horrific. Oh, I'd much rather that because I I don't think I'd be worried because I remember going like snorkeling. I tried to breathe through my nose, in the mask, and the mask stuck to my face, and then I I, I was. I, oh, I... you've got to get your. Well, it's all about the breathing. Yeah. It's and it's really hard because. To, to stay neutrally buoyant, which is what you have to be. You can't be buoyant. Either you're going to go to the top and then you're going to get the bends um, and you don't want to be uh, sinking. What's the sinking one called? Buoyant. Un- <laughs> I don't know. It, it is unbuoyant. Oh, no, uh, <laughs> it is buoyant, but I don't think I can't remember the term. Right? I had to take, I had to take a, a, a test in this. Um, the idea is that you're not up and you're not down. You're neutrally buoyant, so you can just go down. But you you um, get yourself down by your breath control. So to go down, you blow out into your snorkel. Not you're not in a snorkel. You're in a you know what, what's it called regulator. Yeah. I'm trying to remember it. That's My drug. Yeah, yeah. So the regulator. Um, so you breathe out. The more you breathe, I'm trying to think. Is that the higher or do you you either take a breath breath up? Oh, yeah. You take a breath up. Then your lungs become smaller, I think. Oh, I don't know. Whatever. But you're either going to go up or down depending on how much you breathe. And even yeah. if you think you can't breathe out anymore, you probably can. Yeah, um, that's right. So, yeah, was, I haven't quite got it. I mean, I've only done, you know, five dives, five, um, ten dives or something. And some of that was training. So um, I'm, I'm going to be getting a bit more experience in Feb. But yeah, scuba diving's good. Sounds exciting. It's gonna be colder. Mm. It's all right, love. You should come. Yeah, put I'd you like down. That. Yeah, yeah. Sign me up. Put you down for a bit of that. Yeah, I could do it all. 
you, mind you, it's not restful. It's not a restful holiday. You're absolutely bloody knackered when you get back, and you've usually lost weight because, yeah, you just lost weight because you haven't got time to eat. You're under. Right, yeah. You're down there. Podcast. I've got time to eat on this. You have a few snacks. Have a few nuts, love. Yeah, they're yeah, good. They're, they're good for your hormones. We're allowed almonds. Well, almonds are good for you know. I need to write some notes here a minute. Tell them this. <laughs> 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 my friend Andrea has written a really good book about the menopause yeah yeah it's really it's really it's really good book Andrea Marsh uh, and it's a natural menopause it's it's none of the HRT you know I've kind of gone against the whole natural thing where I have to go HRT but some people get it bad one in three people people get it really bad and uh, I'm one of them yeah oh, okay yeah well just get a little bit of testosterone inside you and you might be all right well how am I going to get that I should. <laughs> I, should <not. laughs> I need a bit of man, don't I? A little bit of man inside me. Is that That's right? Secret, then is it? Is that the secret? Because I'm gonna write that down as well. Huh? <laughs> Emma, yes, exactly. You want to go upstairs? I'll say, love. Emma said <laughs> you need some man. You need a you. little man inside you, <laughs> aka testosterone. But don't tell her the last bit. Just yeah, she'll know what you mean. You might get lucky, mate. You'll be all right. You've been married for 30 years, you must be joking. <laughs> <laughs> I like your T-shirt anyway, that's a skull. You, massive. Massive, massive, massive wagons. wagons, that's really cool. Yeah. And we've got, the, we've got the Motorhead special there. I decided to not go band T-shirt today, it's good. I always wear a band be... T-shirt nearly. I nearly yeah, always. I, was, I had, um, what did I have on earlier? Oh, I don't know, Shaking Stevens probably knowing me. Oh, that's good old Shaky. Is oh, there a Christmas song shaking. coming out this year? He's got a new one, has he? No, I don't oh. think so. I was, just, I was asking you, you're the expert. Well, I don't know what he's up to. Shaky's <laughs> got his other classic Christmas song that's been going since we were about nine. Yeah, he um, yeah, yeah, doing. He must earn some money out of that. Yeah. You what can you survive on, the, on a Christmas song. Yeah, you can, yeah. What do you think about Elton John's new one with Ed mm. Sheeran? It's all right. <laughs> I've heard it once. It's a Christmas song. Do you There's notice so anything many strange Christmas songs? with Elton John's voice? I d- I'm not an Elton fan. I don't want to be cruel, though, because I think he does quite a lot for charity. Um, charity so I don't want to slag him off. Um, and I no, only heard it. Uh, what's wrong with his work. voice? Do you think his voice is getting worse? What's happening? It sounds very pompy, if you like. You know I mean? I'll, I'll tell you pompy? What, I, what Terry actually said was it sounded <laughs> like he had Ed Sheeran's plums in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Terry actually said to me. All right, well, together. Then- I need to be. Um, I need to be going on to listen to that then, and I'll get back to you. I'll send an email, and I'll let you know if I think it's he's got plums in his mouth or not. I said what exactly what I said was because who were we talking to? The guy from Shadow Smile. I think so. Yeah, Connor. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I asked him if he'd heard the song, and uh, he said he hadn't heard it yet. And I said I, I don't know what's going on with Elton John's voice. It sounds like he's got a a, a mouthful of balls. <laughs> and then I thought, oh, well, maybe it's Ed Sheeran's. <laughs> Ed Balls. Oh, God. Yeah, that I don't think I can ever listen to that song again now. <laughs> Not without smiling, anyway. Without thinking about that. I do, do I need to be thinking? No, but I just, I just find something funny going on with his voice. It sounds like he's... All right. Um, Noted. Just, I don't know. It's like trying too hard, if you like. Maybe, it's, maybe his love. voice is going. Well, I mean, he's getting on. You yeah, know, they yeah. can't do it forever. Can't do it forever, but no, I haven't got a problem with it. I don't really know it well enough. Uh, you can't go wrong with Shaking Stevens. Merry Christmas, everyone! That's I mean, right. come on, bit of Mariah Carey, all I want for Christmas. Uh, on Primordial the other day, I played uh, My Chemical Romance and their version of All I Want for Christmas Is You. That was okay. nice. I like the covers. I like Christmas covers. How does the that work? Have, have you got a free playlist? I've got a. I have four songs an hour. Four songs an hour. Oh, look, my hand's disappearing into the Northern Four Lights. You can you see can my pick. fridge freezer. I mean, that's not a fridge freezer. That's the Northern <laughs> Lights. Sorry. Um, what? Four songs you can pick or you four, only play four, four an songs hour. an hour? Four, no, there's about, I think there's probably about uh, 13 an hour I get away with. Okay. Um, you don't probably, do much talking, huh? I, I, lot, I, I probably do too much talking. Some of my links are three, two minutes, three minutes long. I'm like, Jesus, Emma, shut up. What was that I just talk. Time? We need some advice off you. What do you want to know? I just witter on. I'm not, I, I wouldn't have got away with that on Kerrang or any, on Heart, when I was on Heart, Jesus, you could talk for 20 seconds and that was it. Don't go over. Why did you do 21 seconds? I'm yeah, like, really? uh, I said hello 
over and it okay. took one second. I said a 20 second lick, you know, it's quite hard. Um, yeah, Kerrang was always, you know, one, one and a half minutes, two tops. Um, crunch and roll, you know, crunch and roll with a guest. With a oh, guest. Yeah, yeah, you said with a guest. Yeah. The two minute, yeah. Um, you weren't really allowed to just drone on and on and on. Um, it, no, you're not going to drone people on. People get though. bored. Yeah. They get they get bored. They just want to know what's going on. Um, on Primordial, I might do uh, an intro over a, uh, a link over an intro. Um, sometimes I'll talk about the postman coming to the door and, you know, what's been delivered and I'll just witter on and I'll just chat because um, we're like family on Primordial and we talk about things like that. And I'll yeah. talk about HRT and I'll talk about my menopause and I'll talk about my dog and all sorts of stuff. Um, but... Don't know what I was talking about there. Completely <laughs> well, we were lost. talking about your radio show. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. 13 songs an hour yeah. and four of my choice. So I choose the hour opener. So I always choose something that I, you know, like something big, like Muse, Plug In Baby or a Linkin Park track or Food Fighters, you know, a nice little hour opener, you know, quite punchy. Yeah. And then I usually play four new I mean, Primordial plays mostly new music anyway and mostly independent artists. So, you know, there's not a sort of shortage of playing new music, (laughs) Uh, but I play uh, bands that I know. Uh, I play some plug-in baby bands, but I I certainly don't take the piss. I I play songs that other pluggers have sent me. Um, I share it out, share out my love, and, yeah, for an hour. So, yeah, I get away with eight eight generally. I I sometimes play, you know, bands like Those Damn Crows who I love and... um, I'll, you know, we've got them playing at our primordial big gig in April. Um, so, you know, if they're, they're headlining, I can get away with playing them more than I usually would. Yeah, so, yeah. but yeah, I just, I play my mates and I play my clients and I play other people's clients. Um, bands are more than welcome to upload to primordial system as well. You just do it on the website. Okay. So, um, yeah, we're big on um, supporting independent artists. So, yeah. I is get that away. an internet based radio then or is it? Yeah, it's on. Um, it's online. So primordialradio.com, and they've got an app as well. Um, and we're we're sort of moving from just being a radio station to to moving into you know more content creation. Um, so they're going to be doing more stuff on Twitch. I don't know much about Twitch, but apparently no, I don't know anything about it. What the kids are doing, um, and, and getting more interviews online. Um, you know, everything's content these days, isn't it? Yeah. What are we going? How are we going to make that? And then we're going to have a, we've got really good merch as well. So they're going to start developing our primordial merch. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, obviously, you know, we, we need the audience to be paying their subscription. Otherwise, we won't be able to survive and, and carry on going because there is no advertising. There's no, not one bit of advertising. So everything that we have coming in to keep the radio station going is from those um, £60, is £60 a year or £5 a month. Okay. So, excuse me, that was like a hiccup. That what about really sponsors then? Hiccup. Do you get many sponsors? Don't, we don't have any. We don't, we don't oh, no, want it. You don't advertise, do you? They don't. That's, that's like their golden rule. We don't want any um, brought to you in association with. Yeah, yeah. We don't do any of that. Um, so, yeah, it's literally a radio station run by the listeners. Okay. And uh, if they don't pay their five ninety nine a month or their £60 a, a year to make it £5, I pay to be a member and you I do a show. <laughs> I pay sixty pounds to be a member of Primordial. I support them, and I do a show for free. So you know, whatever. Are you doing I'm quite happy. Radio? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good. I think it's a nice thing to do, um, and I don't think a lot of people get paid for doing um, the internet radio no, or no, even no. the community FM radio stations, which I think is sad. Um, it doesn't bother me. I've got a full time job. I don't need it. You know, I'm not saying I don't need any money. Obviously, I'll. You know, I'm not going to turn it down, but um, I'm not, you know, poor, yeah. so I don't, I don't need to demand wages. For, so you do it remotely that. then? Just do it from my kitchen where I'm sitting now, oh, in the Northern okay. Lights. Yeah. With this, just I've just got this one microphone. It's a USB mic. I don't have yeah. a mixer or anything. No, I, I just either. log into their system. They use a system called Zeta. Okay. So you log in and you can see all your playlist comes up. You drag and drop your songs in um and and then just press hit record you can hear the tail end of the song that you're going to talk over at the end of and then bring the next one in and then so you know it all sounds it sounds like live radio i pre-record it on a friday and my show goes out on a saturday um some of the other guys you know pre-record about 10 minutes before they go on so it is pretty fresh and they can see what's going on on twitter or instagram or facebook or whatever so but i pre-record on a friday usually because saturday is housework day and i have to do my housework Okay. And 
and my errands. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's primordial. Oh, that what are you doing? With, how are you doing your show on Scotland Rocks Radio? How do you, how are you going to do it? Do you pre, I don't know. Yeah, how, I'm, I'm asking you. It. So, uh, we've got to pre record it. And um, it's going to go out on a Thursday evening at seven o'clock. Nice. And we'll repeat it again at 11 o'clock on a Saturday morning, which is quite a nice spot, I think. It's nice to have a repeat. Yeah, yeah, it's only an hour show, but an um, hour. So, how do what do what system do you use? What so how do you get your music, you know, lined up, and then you add your links, won't you? How do, yeah, uh, what do you I'm use? Not, I can't tell you. You it's don't know. Secret. No, I do know, but I, I can. It's a free, free. free Is it hour. mix or something? I can't remember. No, I've got a free I, hour. I don't. Oh. My I show is oh, our show. Sorry, not my show. Our show, David, is a uh, is a free hour. We can play whatever we like. We can talk to whoever we like. We're just not allowed to swear. We can swear, but not very much. No, you don't want to be swearing, love. Come on, don't no, risk no, no, no. it. You don't need no, to be a potty. You know man. what I mean. <laughs> um, we're not allowed to, um, and we're not allowed to slag other artists off like yeah, we do on the podcast. The about other artists. Yes, well, that's t- that's traditional radio. I remember I slagged off ELO once. I played one of their songs. I didn't even know what it was. Something about a telephone. Yeah, and I yeah, said, oh, I, I much prefer Mr. Blue Sky. Yeah. And my, I got called out. I was doing the night shifts. I finished work at seven in, six in the morning. I think I was doing one till six in the morning. And my boss phoned me up at like nine. I was in bed. And he says, Emma, I didn't like what you said about ELO. If you can't be positive about a song, don't say anything. I was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not allowed to well, have an opinion unless it's a good one. Yeah, well, we have actually got told off. Our first show hasn't even been released yet, and we've already been told off. So, <laughs> hey, and for, and for a change, and it wasn't me; it was David. For a change, right? <laughs> David, man, it's, it's normally me trying to wind Terry in a little bit, but I was the naughty one. Ooh. <laughs> Did you have to go in and re-edit. What's happened? No, I've left they, it. Well, they were okay about it. It was just a bit they of. They just said, "Don't do it again." Okay. Basically, oh, um, we Fair won't mention it again, will we? <laughs> no, 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 we won't mention it. You'll hear it on the radio if you listen to it. But, um, I yeah. want to check it out. Yeah, yeah, the first show's a little bit higgledy piggledy because it's our first show, obviously. Mm. Um, I think we've got like 10 songs in there, have we, Dave? Eight yeah, but we, yeah, we, yeah. I think the gaps are maybe a little little bit big. But uh, Do you have ad breaks to allow for as well? Any news no, no, or anything no, like ads. that? No Just adverts. a constant hour. See, that's nice. All of the radio stations I've worked at, it's always been adverts every 20 minutes. It's like, oh, God. So. No, there's no ads. Unless they yeah, Primordia, no ads, obviously. You know, it's yeah, it's just me wittering on in between thirteen songs, I guess. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Yeah, it's it's nice. So you had some, good. I think you had some really good guests then on Kerrang, did you? Yeah, I mean, uh, throughout my life, I've been um, very blessed with the the guests that I've had. Um, I mean, when I was growing up, David, you may have been in the you know, as we're the same age, you may have liked Adam and the Ants. Yeah. That was, you know, that that sort of era. Um, he was my absolute hero. He was my first hero alongside Shaken Stevens, 1981. I was nine. Um, and then I got to interview Adam Ant in 1995. I was 23. I was like, oh, my God, I've loved him since I was nine. This is amazing. And I was thinking, you know, they said never meet your heroes. Were you really 23 or were you still 19? No, I was 23. I was actually 23 at that point. Oh. <laughs> it was 1995. I'm born in 72, oh, okay. so I probably was. Um, and he came in, he had his album called Wonderful, and um, I got to interview him, and I was dreading it in a way because never meet your heroes. Um, but he was absolutely lovely, so down to earth. And literally, you know, we finished the interview, and he wrote, a, I think I had a Post-it note or something on my desk, and he wrote his address on on this Post-it note and his telephone number, and he said, call me and come and see me. And I did. And we had a few dates and it was lovely. So, And he he was great. He used to go to, he was sort of touring America at that time. And I've got postcards that he sent me and uh, lovely Christmas presents that he's given me little books with, you know, little sign books. He's a sweet man. Um, haven't spoken to him for a while. Um, did he end up in the funny farm? Well, he's got bipolar. And oh, okay. uh, I don't think you're supposed to say funny farm these days. Oh, well, definitely not <laughs> but, on radio. <laughs> But I know what you're talking about. He ha- he's got bipolar and he stopped taking his meds, oh, and right, okay. oh. he um, probably needed to take his meds, and that's when he had that issue um, back whenever that was. Um, I think would it have been 
probably about late 90s, wasn't it? And, yeah, uh, early but I think he's got, I think he thought he was better. This is the problem when you're on medication, you think, because they the medication helps you and you think, I'm all right, I don't need them. So you come off them. Yeah. And then, of course, you realise you do need them because you are still bipolar. Well, you, don't or think, you're, you don't think you need them. Or you're depressed. you've already gone crazy. Yeah, it's a, it's a problem, isn't it? And yeah. then you get sectioned or whatever. Um, so, yeah, but he's good. Uh, he's good as far as I know. I haven't spoken to him since 1997, but um, he's a lovely guy. And then, yeah, so that was great. And then AHA, I used to love AHA and then interviewing Morton Harkett. He was an absolute dreamboat, absolutely gorgeous, loved that. You know, it's just so many bands from my childhood that I got to interview, which was great. And then, yeah, it Kerrang. I mean, it was just literally, you'd have, sometimes you'd have three or four bands coming in every day and you're like, Jesus, who, who's coming in now? And, you know, you've got Maximo Park coming in and then followed by Funeral for a Friend and then you've got Dave Grohl from the Food Fighters coming down and you're like, Christ, I can't keep up with it all. It was, it was absolutely knackering half the time at Kerrang and it, you are – you know, chasing your tail constantly. It's like, Emma, you, you know, you'd have a live at Kerrang interview to do. Then you'd be on the stage because they had a little mini stage at the actual Kerrang radio studios. So you'd be hosting on the stage in front of the listeners. And then you'd be running back into your studio to carry on with your show. It, it, it was crazy times. You're constantly working. We were doing seven shows a week. Um, it was, yeah, really hard work. But, you know, hanging out with um, Foo Fighters was cool. Um, you can't really moan. Yeah, you know, I can't really remember Corey Taylor from uh, Slipknot, obviously Stone Sour. Corey Taylor was one of my faves. Um, the funeral, as I say, funeral for a friend. You you can't go wrong with the Welsh. Mm. Can't go wrong with the Welsh. Um, they were all lovely, uh, well, hanging out at the Kerrang Awards, hosting from the Kerrang Awards, and um, just really, really good times. But you know, there's a lot of work going in. You know, being yeah, involved yeah. in producing radio shows. If you have to interview a band, you need to research that band. Yeah. You can't just say great funeral for a friend are coming in they've got a new album all right you're gonna to have to listen to that album you're gonna to have to think of your questions that you're going to ask that band you can't just wing it you know you're, you're on national radio you've got over a million listeners per week um you need to be on it you need to make sure the band get you you know get you to ask some decent questions um but uh, mostly rock bands are great anyway they're really cool um so yeah lots of really good. jared leto from uh, 30 seconds to mars i interviewed him on his uh, tour bus yeah i didn't even know he was in a band. i just knew he was a, as an actor then... yeah well he was acting at the time when i met him and he just and he was um playing uh, john lennon's murderer it was a um what's made his name i can't remember i want to say chapman or something who killed john lennon That's we should problem. know we should know this was, um... But it was that film, and he played the murderer, and he had to put on so much weight. If you Google yeah. it later, yeah. you'll see Leto, and he won't. But he's he just played um a, a, a bigger person in that Gucci film. He was bigger, you know. I don't know whether he's wearing a fat suit and that, but he put the weight on. And when I met him in two thousand and eight, um, when he, he was killed Gucci as well. I don't know if he's. I know I haven't seen it. I've just seen the trailer, and he's he's a big boy in it. I don't oh. know if he's <laughs> properly put on weight. Um, and he was trying to lose weight at that time, but God, he was stunning. And and then I think he, you know, he's, I don't know. He, he he does really well. He's a really good actor, isn't he? Yeah, he's I mean, great in you know. He's I don't, know. I don't even know who he is. Oh yeah, my was, gosh, was, uh, you haven't lived, Jared Leto. Yeah, the new Blade Runner. Gorgeous. Well, he's Joker, isn't he? And something, isn't he the Joker? What is he? Oh, he's in yeah, he's, Fight Club with Brad Pitt. Yeah, yeah. Gucci. Oh, he's 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 done many, and Thirty Seconds to Mars, great band, brilliant vocalist. I know Thirty um, Seconds to Mars, but I don't know. Great songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jared does that, but yeah, I interviewed him on uh, sitting in his bus, and you know, literally right it's in front of him. That they all came in the studio then. Yeah. Um. So well, they did. Yeah, Thirty Seconds to Mars made me leave the studio and had to go to the venue to interview them, oh, but it was okay. quite private. It was fine. Um. Once with the Foo Fighters, I had to go to the NEC. Um, cause they, sometimes they just don't have time for promo. You know, you arrive somewhere, you've got to do your sound check and then you've got to eat something, you know, they have to keep an eye on their voices. They're not, sometimes they're not allowed to talk. Like when I went to the NEC to do Foo Fighters, I couldn't do Dave that day because he was resting his throat. Yeah. So I just did the other three members of the band. There were only four members in the band those days. Um, so I just did, um, Taylor and, uh, Shifty and Nate. And that was really nice cause I'd already interviewed Taylor before, um but yeah dave was lovely when i interviewed him first time me and taylor and dave were belching taylor's belching. quite a, quite a belcher not a trumper a belcher <laughs> so foo's always good 
I interviewed um, Nickelback. That was another NIA in Birmingham gig that they, that they, um, they asked me to go down to the venue. I don't like doing interviews that are not in the studio. It takes a lot. Come, I'm right out of my comfort zone. So I always feel a bit, I don't know. It's, it's the old um, inferiority complex. It's when do you, cause I'm in, you know, as I said already, I'm Emma Scott on the radio and I'm Emma miles in real life. And it's when you're out of the studio, it, I feel as if I'm Emma, Emma Miles and therefore I'm just a normal human being. When I'm Emma Scott, I'm in the zone. I'm, in, I'm fine. I've got oh, my microphone. A radio celebrity. Yeah, but I'm also a human being. So well, everyone's a human being. I mean, I, I, it's a character. I have to get into it. It is a character. I'm in a sort okay. of Emma Scott character now. Um, if I was Emma Miles, I might be crying because I'd be like, oh, my God, <laughs> talk to these guys. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm such an imposter. Um but yeah, so going down to the venue, but Chad from Nickelback was lovely. And I said, I'm really nervous and I don't really want to do this in front of everyone because there was TV crews, there was uh, meet and greets and things. And he said, that's okay. Well, he actually didn't speak like that. He said, we'll go into a side room. And so he took me into a side room and he was very sweet because I said I was anxious and I didn't really want to be seen. So I just sat in there, you know, it was a massage room, funny enough, um, but no massage happened. Oh, you never. <laughs> Sadly, I mean, I would have loved a bit of the Kroger. I was married at the time, so I couldn't really be putting it out there. Um, damn it. But no, he's lovely. So, yeah, I much prefer being in a studio um, and being the Emma Scott sort of. Well, how character. are you going to go forward with your interviews for your uh, primordial then? Because you, you well, you're going to go, you, you're going to start doing interviews, or yeah, but I'll just be here in the zone with my mic and my headphones, so I'll be Emma Scott. It's fine. It'll be fine. Oh, right, okay. And I'll just have to get into character. I'll step into character. Step in. Uh, so I felt a bit Christmassy there. Was that Elton John as well? No, that's no. that's not Elton John, is it? That's that's the one we don't want to talk about. No, <laughs> he's in prison, isn't he? You know? Who? Gary Glitter, isn't it? Oh God, that wasn't Gary Glitter, was it? Step into Christmas, I'm sure, is Gary Glitter. No, I don't, I don't know. Think it is. I don't know. I can't remember. Well, if it is, I don't really want to bring his name up, but um, yeah, he's a bad man. Oh, yeah, that's well, me. that's what happens when you live in Vietnam, me, I suppose. Me chair. Well, you know. I don't think it was just the fact that he was in Vietnam. I think it's just because he's <laughs> a bad man. <laughs> yeah, bad man. Know, but yes, I've been. Away with it. Oh, let's not go there. <laughs> We've done it. I've got a bruise on my hand. I don't know how I've got. It's like. Br- Have you been black. on the table? I done. So, I, I I had a bit of a rage for some. I don't know what I did earlier, but I had a rage. <laughs> Your dog wasn't playing up, was he? The dog. The dog was probably at it, in and out, in and out. But uh, I think I might have caught it on something. But um, yeah. Mm. So you're saying then with your. What you did on Cum, on uh, Cum, Cum Brown, I was going to say then. Cumbran FM, Kerrang FM, Kerrang Radio. FM. I'd like to be on Cumbran FM. I think that I'd be I'd benefit them. I can speak a lot of Welsh. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> I cannot speak Welsh. That was I my Welsh accent. Speaking about None of us speaking what? <laughs> no, when I was in school, they banned it. Well, they banned speaking Welsh. Yeah, it was it was classed as dying language when I was in school, so I learned French and German. That's because Thatcher banned it. Aww. That's why it was a dying language. But now, everybody has got to do one GCSE in Welsh. It was half language. Wow. Yeah, it was half a GCSE when my kids were in school, but now it's a full GCSE they've got to do. Fair play. That's good. It's hard. I remember I I used to work with Stuart Cable for the Stereophonics. Oh, cool. Peace, Stu. I love Stu. Um, he used to do the show after me, or was he before me? Did you date him before me? No, I didn't date Stu. No, oh. no, no, no. We were friends, and we, we were like brother and sister. I was, I was absolutely gutted when he died. Yeah. Um, what was I talking about, Stu? Oh yeah, and Stuart, being Welsh, he was learning the Welsh language. He didn't know. He didn't know anything. But he was. And when we were at his funeral, that his uh, Welsh teacher was just saying how how he was, you know, doing really well. And I'm. My voice is going, but not because yeah. I'm crying. Because I'm. Oh, okay. No, I'm not oh, crying. Upset, then. God, I am. I, I I was gutted when when I heard, uh, but I've just got a frog in my throat. <laughs> and um, I was driving to do a radio show at the time, and I heard it on the radio, and I was like, "Shit!" Yeah. And I uh, I was like, I couldn't. You know, when you when you in fact, I saw it on Twitter. I was in a traffic jam, and I must have seen something like I uh, must have said "R.I.P. Stuart Cable" or something. I was like what the hell mm. and then um then you 
then you you're like what the hell's happened here and and you're like you know frantic phone calls while you're driving <clears throat> and i was just about to do a, a drive time show on heart um happy 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 and i had to phone ahead to my boss and say look Stuart's just died and i'm gutted um i'm gonna do the show because you can't let radio show down you know live radio and he said yeah just keep it keep it simple and i had to keep it simple but his funeral was lovely and uh it was really musical and really really lovely uh, but yes he was um he did very well with his welsh but and he took it seriously but uh he Excellent. was learning it later on in life and and felt that he needed to to do that so it's good that you know the welsh are learning welsh yeah it is yeah yeah so, but, and I we love gonna... you yeah we do i mean we had um i don't know if you know um do you know a band called perla i've heard of perla I, th uh, I think they've sent sent me some stuff in the past for maybe maybe my primordial show. Yeah. Well, do you know um, Stuart's band Killing for Company? Yes, I had them um, play. Greg's the lead singer, isn't he? Um, Greg yeah, Jones. well, uh, uh, Wendell Kingpin. Yes. What's his real name, Dave? I don't know. I know that name. Yeah. Like Steve. Steve, yeah. Yeah, Steve. Williams. Yeah, we've had him on the show and he spoke quite a lot because they were in, obviously they were in Killing for Company together. Ah, right well like yeah about, uh... they played they played a couple of gigs for um, emma scott presents was a you know gig thing i ran for about seven years i think yeah. quite a few people played stuart played one of them with um stone gods uh who were the darkness part of the darkness and um we we uh i think stone gods get the stone gods drummer had to go to rehab so they said emma i'm really sorry we're gonna have to cancel the gig and i was like no gutted I was like, and I'm, like, I'm a I'm not just a gig promoter that you know books a few bands and then sends out a few flyers or whatever and then just comes in and like you know oh great look at this gig I'm properly like in it I'm I mean I'm like hang on no I'm not having this and and I was talking to Richie the lead singer and I was like no we need we need to find a drummer and I was looking at, across at the studio and Stuart was in there I was like I said hang on a minute <laughs> I said, I'll phone you back, Richie. I've got an idea. And I went into the studio and I asked you, I said, Stu, I really need a drummer for my gig two weeks time or whatever it was. It was quite short notice. And he said, I'll, I'll do it. I can't do his accent. He had a really, <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Uh, hook me up with the boys. And they didn't know each other at that time. And, uh, and um, Dan, uh, you know, Dan Hawkins and uh, Richie, they, they became really, really good friends. Um, and so Stu went across to Wales. I think they did, a, they did some rehearsals. He learned the whole album, the whole Stone God's first album, uh, the one about Silver Spoons. I think it's something about Silver Spoons. Sorry, guys, I've forgotten. Uh, it was a long time ago. And that, that gig was absolutely amazing. Um, and, that, yeah, it was just amazing just to be at side of stage watching Stu play drums for Stone Gods. That was a special, special yeah. occasion. So, yeah, and, um, and and yes, I had Killing for Company on as well. And I did that as a favour to Stu because they they just started off and um, nobody was really putting, you know, it's really hard when you're starting out as a band. It's really hard to get decent gigs. It's yeah. hard to get any gigs. Yeah. And Stu was like, he said, oh, I've got a band. I, I want to do the accent, but I can't really do the accent because he doesn't really speak like that. Um, he said, I've got this band, Emma. Can you listen to it? I said, of course I will, Stu. And I listened to it and I thought they were very, very good. And I they said, well, I'm going to play amazing, you on my they? Sunday night show. So I started supporting them on the radio because even though he worked at Kerrang, you couldn't just sort of steam ahead and get playlisted. You had to go up the, the ranks. Yeah. It's like, you know, Johnny Doom from Kerrang Radio is in a band. His band doesn't get playlisted. Wyatt Wendell's from Planet Rock is in a band. He doesn't get his band playlisted. You've got to go through the ranks. Anyway, so I said to Stu, I said, I'm going to play Killing for Company. I think I think they're excellent. Mm. And he was really chuffed. I said, let me put you on a, a couple of gigs as well. And um they played one and then the other one that they were booked in for, he died. So that got that got scrubbed. We just sort of did it as a, uh, a tribute kind of thing. And, um, yeah, I was supposed to do a thing on stage and everything. And I had it all in my head. I just couldn't I couldn't do it because I couldn't stop crying. So, yeah, yeah. but, yeah, um, but I love Killing for Company and, uh, and that Stone God's gig. That's, that's and that's the thing. video that's going on at the end of the show. Here we go. Sorted. Yes. Yeah, baby. I think that we need that. We, we need do. that in our lives. We do. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I've talked quite a long time. Sorry. Yeah, we have. All right, mm. we're going to go to, uh, well, it's not a new section anymore, but our pretty much end of the show section. Oh. It's called The Word Police. The Word Police? Yes. Oh, Christ. So it's about, it's about <laughs> banned, words that have been banned. And my words for today are soul food. I don't know if you're a bit of a foodie. 
but soul food, soul food has been banned and it's been banned as regional or ethnic bias they ban everything as fucking regional oh sorry it's war they ban oh. everything as regional or, or ethnic bias what's what's soul food soul food yeah it's like um food from another part of the world that's really comforting I oh, suppose. Oh. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing. I've never ever heard of it, to be honest, but I probably wouldn't be offended by it. I wouldn't no. be offended. Outrageous. That's a terrible banning. Yeah, it is. Well, all the, honestly, mate, nearly all the words are terrible bannings, to be honest. Mm. I mean, we had Be Bevan on from uh, your favourite band, the Electric Light Orchestra, when they played that telephone song. The telephone and... song, yeah. <laughs> it missed a telephone phone man or something. I, I can't remember. Telephone line. Going... telephone line. Telephone line. Telephone yeah. line, that's it. Yeah, it's not as good as Mr. Blue Sky. It's not, no. Blue Sky, In my it? opinion. Yeah, yeah. But I would never slag that off on the radio ever again after getting told off. And on that show, the word was dialect. And I mean... Dialect? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's been word. banned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got those in Wales. They've got loads all over the UK. The whole UK's well, made up of dialects. You've got to travel five miles and you, I can't understand them. But yeah. soul food, anyway, for today's... Uh, yeah. It's today's words. Oh, dear. It's com like comfy food, is it? But from another country. Yeah. So, like... There's my dog. Bab. So, when, you, when you've been out on a night out and you've had a few beers... I don't think you call that soul food. And you've got to go to... You've got to yeah, no. That's drunk that's food. <laughs> That's, I'm going to probably hurl this up before I even get home food. That is, I don't care where this has come from, food. I'm pissed and I need yeah. to soak up my alcohol food. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's comfort food for me. Yeah, Why that's just comfort. In the morning. That's that, and, and then, ha but what's the best hangover food? I mean, i got to go McDonald's. I must say, I was... Bacon and egg McMuffin? I was massively hungover once. No, I think it was too late for breakfast. Oh. But it was Jägermeister. You see, you get, you get really pissed on something. And it puts you off. I've not drunk Jägermeister since. And that was 2012. Oh, okay. I haven't touched it since. It was big in Kerrang. You know, we, we used to have Jager bottles bombs. of the stuff. They just literally pour it down. Your, they had the, the little pouring things on the end. Literally just used to walk past and just pour it in our mouths. And I was like, oh. And it tastes like cough mixture as well. And it's like, yeah. oh, it's like Cavonia, isn't it? Um, but it's uh, absolutely lethal. But yeah, hangover food. That's soul food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did work, my, though. my hangover food when I was 18 was pilchards on toast. That's what I used to have as hangover cure. <laughs> oh, no. Honest to God, it was amazing. <laughs> I but couldn't it, deal with them anyway. Tomato sauce mm. and then squidge it onto the onto the toast. No, I can I know yeah. I can feel that, that, <laughs> that you're getting something out of that. One of my favorite ones when I was younger was spaghetti, you know, tin spaghetti on toast Ooh. with loads of cheese on top. That's a great hangover well i thought it was anyway that's mm. sometimes the only thing i can anyway it's foul oh i don't i don't have it so much in, in uh, these days because i'm a bit healthier i have things with spinach i have yeah. spinach don't you know i had a spinach protein shake today oh nice spinach and blueberries and just protein shake and a bit of almond milk been to the gym have you it, well, I haven't been to the gym, and that's why I thought I shouldn't really eat too much stuff. I've got to decide what oh, I'm doing okay. about so the gym. It's like a meal replacement, was it? I was, yeah. I didn't know what I wanted for breakfast, so I just did that. But and, and my spinach was going off, so yeah, I thought I'll just I'll scramble get that some in. eggs, mate. Get it in. I usually With have a eggs. bit of spinach. I have, I have. The, uh, this is what I usually have, and I'll have uh, spinach. With tomato, plum tomatoes, or you know cherry tomatoes, yeah. plus mushrooms, and I stir that or uh, fry that off. That's nice. So it's all wilted and like mm, nice. And then I'll have scrambled egg on the side with cheese on top. So then you know it's a lovely meal, very protein rich, and very tasty. That keeps me going. Um, but yeah, otherwise you know just egg on toast. That's cool. nice too. I like. Anyway, we're talking about something else now. Yeah, I'm coming around yours for breakfast. Tangent. You're more than welcome. <laughs> I'll send you a photo. Oh, sometimes not. <laughs> I'll send you some food porn. I do like a bit of food porn, love. All right, then. All right. Thanks for talking to us. This has been fun. I've enjoyed it. Thanks for asking me on. That's good. That's good we, we try and keep it funny. All right, then, go on. What advice can you give us as oh. amateur podcasters and amateur We're radio not amateurs. We're triers. You're, We're very, triers. We're triers. You're very professional. Well, I don't think you have anything that I need to help you with because um, you, I've, well, I've watched some of your podcasts. I've watched. Do we call this a podcast? I mean, it's not really a podcast. What is it? A vlog cast? 
I don't know. Do well, we like to call it a podcast, but... I mean, we, a podcast is officially an to... audio thing, isn't it? Yeah. Visual. Yeah. So, you know, we get double our money with you two. Um, I think you're very good because you're very natural and you are just yourselves. And that is the key thing to being a good broadcaster. Always be yourself. Don't do the whole, oh, yeah, smashing it nicely. Let's do <laughs> Don't do that because you, you're going to get caught out one of these yeah, days. Yeah. Always be natural. If you're having a bad day, tell your listener that you're having a bad day. If you're having a good day, tell them you're having a good day. One-to-one medium. Don't don't come on and say, hi, guys, how are you? Because only one person. You're only talking to one person. And this is why a lot of the Radio 1 DJs irritate me because it's all very much guys and you guys or get in touch. It's you guys are getting in. And I'm like, stop saying you guys. It's just me listening. There's only one person listening. Okay. So always treat it like a phone call. Like, you know, that's how I, I was taught when I was younger. And, I, you know, I was very young, yeah, 16, 17, 18, sort of trying to figure out how to do it. There's no DJ school. There probably are DJ schools now. Um, yeah, probably. There's the, there's the dog. Um, so, yeah, one-to-one smile on the radio because um, sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to sound like you're happy um, when you're just using your normal face. So I always smile when I'm doing the radio. I always smile like this, and then it just sounds it sounds like it's lifted up, and you know you're you're somebody's friend on the radio at the end of the day. So you know you want to be happy. You don't want to be a grumpy old git. So the <laughs> no, smiling the podcast one to one. Don't talk too much. People get bored. Um, just be passionate about what you're doing and be yourself. And I don't think you can go wrong. Cool, cool. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. And you're nice yeah. human beings and people will know that and they'll like it. Let's hope so. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be all right. Let's get you on some more radio stations. We'll spread you out. Oh, that would be great. Mm, I'm sure I, I could know. find some stations that will take the show. Yeah, really? I don't know how Scottish radio rocks would feel about that, though. Well, if it's exclusive to them, obviously, no, they won't want you to share it out. But you could do another one for other radio stations, should you wish. Yeah. That would be cool. But I well, is your I'm, lobster. You know, we've both got full-time jobs, so. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? You know, my show's only two hours on Primordial, but, you know, I have to, there's there's the prep, there's mm. the recording, there's the promo after, because, you know, you've got to do all the social media and everything. It's not just two hours, is it? No, uh, you no. know, the uploading, the downloading, the writing back to bands, saying, yeah, yeah, I'll play your song, or, you know, writing back to the pluggers, things like that. It all takes time. Yeah, yeah. and I have yeah. to edit these podcasts. Yeah. Do well, you? So Terry does all that, and then I do all the plug-in in the bath. Oh, do you now? Yeah. <laughs> I take my phone upstairs and I plug in the bath. Oh, is it? Hey. Oh, on the radio playing. the Bit other day. New time. On the radio, just before we go, on the radio the other day, David, a young girl was in the bath with a phone and she had it plugged in and it fell in the bath and now she's in a coma. I never, I never plug my phone in. No. So I don't plug it in. I never, well, ever... I don't think you could even plug in in a bathroom. Maybe. Well, she probably took the extension lead anyway. Oh, oh that's, ter- that's a terrible shame. Yeah, well, hopefully yes. she'll survive. Oh, terrific. I hope she's nobody's never, girlfriend. Otherwise, never, the Smiths have wrote a song about her. Yeah. I never, <laughs> ever take any electricity into the bathroom. <laughs> no, don't. You're electric enough as it is, aren't you, love? <laughs> I'm the I create. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then, Emma Bye-bye. Scott. It's hard to say goodbye, isn't it? It is. It's terrible, isn't it? All we're right. we're yeah. terrible at that. We are. We're the we worst. Know, we normally do it about five or six times because then you, <laughs> and then you find something else to talk about. I know. We kept. We keep going off. About, this yeah. is the problem with me. I can't be trusted. I need gagging. Yeah. I'm All trying right. to think of some some way I can gag myself. I don't. I can't. I can't. Uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, 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 my board rubber. I can gag myself like that. No. Just look like an idiot now, don't I? But anyway, it's been a pleasure. I've very much enjoyed being on. Have I got thank a pen you. on my face now? Oh, no. Yeah. I'm all, all right. right. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. having me. It's been a yeah. pleasure. And um, thank you in advance for talking to some of my plug-in babies. Thank no you. Yeah, well, don't appreciate log off. It. No, I'm not logging off. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you, guys. Guys, I right. uh, did it. Should we do a screenshot? Let's do a screenshot. Do you do screenshots? No, I'm going to do I'm going to do us all. Hang on. Yeah. I'll do it. Hold on. I'm I'm spreading the thing. How do you do Let me job? spread my thing, love. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm on capture. Right. Everyone looking at their camera. And <laughs> 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 that's really cool. I love. To, I, I wonder if I can put it in the chat. Oh no, I can't. I've lost it. I don't no, think I'm gonna. I'm gonna hit the. Bye. Toodles. <laughs>
sick and tired to the cold. I'm not naive. I've heard this all before. What a waste of my time. And your friends all say that you. Shit! Yeah.